Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is Lucky Episode 13, playing as the German Empire in the modern-day mod Millennium Dawn for Hearts of Iron 4. We have begun a war with Russia, uh, which they started, but we intend to finish. And I, uh, I have most of my armies trying to break through up here in the north through Norway to come down on the Russians from that side, but I am in the process of orders for a naval invasion up here in the Baltic coast. So uh, that'll open up a second front and hopefully we can make a rush to Moscow that way because uh, I have a feeling it's going to take a while to break through up here with these divisions. So in the meantime, I've begun some strategic bombing of uh, the mainland area of Russia and we'll just wait for this invasion to be ready to go and that'll that'll hopefully allow me to start getting this thing under control a little bit. In the meantime, we're going to have a bunch of naval combat happening uh, as we make sure that we have supremacy here in the Baltic Sea to allow that naval invasion to go forward. And I've queued up a bunch of tungsten factories um, because right now that's the thing I'm trading for more than any other is tungsten. So the more I can produce that at home, the less I'll have to trade for abroad and just allow myself to continue to be self-sufficient. So um, now that I've kind of broken free of the issue of having to repair factories, I can start focusing on some other things, naval factories and also tungsten. That also allows me to go ahead and look at new national focuses. And I don't have to do any more of this uh, construction repair. Sounds like somebody just got nuked. Wow, it was Copenhagen. <laughs> so I still don't know which of my allies is doing that. I lean toward France, but I don't know for sure. But in the meantime, I'm going to think about which national focus I want to go with, and I'll let you know what that is when I come back. All right, so a problem has happened. Since I've sent all of my divisions abroad, uh, it looks like the African coalition is making a renewed push here, uh, breaking out of Denmark and hitting me. So I've just rushed a bunch of units into the field, and we're going to we're gonna push them up here to deal with this issue. Uh, I've got occupation forces, which probably aren't going to help much, but uh, at the very least, they'll help me to stem the tide up here. So we'll get them up there, get them to deal with this issue. I've got some infantry divisions that I can rush into that as well. And we'll stop that real quick. And push back there. It's good to keep some divisions home, especially now that I have so many. Uh, I have the freedom to be able to do that. So I guess we should give them some orders for an offensive line. To push back up into Denmark here. In the meantime, some further trade issues to work out. Oh, that's strange. All right, let's pause for just a second here. Kind of uh, caught up on just about everything here. We can go with our next generation of unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, so we'll push back there. That'll be all settled, no problem. Uh, we're waiting on the naval invasion to get underway. It's not quite there yet. But once they land, it looks like he's got some units waiting for me. That shouldn't be an issue. Have we broken through up here yet? It doesn't appear that we have. So we're into October of 2015, and while I continue to wait for my naval invasion to get started, um, my allies have begun to land in Russia. And so we've got some American units that are there and helping out. And they're starting to push inland from the Baltic Sea as we continue to kind of try to break out. I did just nuke his forces here to try and soften them up a little bit, but obviously my issue right now is organization. 
uh, with my existing units that are there. So once their organization gets back up a little bit, we'll be in a better position to be able to move forward. In the meantime, not a whole lot else really going on. We can look at our war with Russia right now. It's called the Russian-French War. Um, but China is actually doing really well in this war for us. The Russians have lost 640,000 men. But let's take a look over here because China's pushing through. They're not doing well at this very second. Looks like they're losing where they're fighting. But they have pushed up into the easternmost parts of Russia. So this is going to be as expected with a war with Russia. It's going to be slow going. It's going to take a long time. But I think once I break through and once we get to better weather in the spring, things will definitely pick up and we'll be able to kind of overrun them. It's just going to take a while for that to happen. I've pushed back and taken most of my territory back here. Go ahead and move into this spot here, finish them off, and then we can kind of push back up into Denmark. All right, so somebody's firing back. Uh, Poznan in Poland was just nuked. That obviously did not come from me. I've got to assume that that came from the Russians. And what that tells me is that I don't have... Well, I do have air superiority there, so they should not be able to nuke in an area where there's air superiority. Now that was in Denmark. That was my enemies. And we've just about pushed all the way up through into Denmark now. I'm doing this manually just to make it go faster. A lot of my tungsten factories have come online, so now I can reduce the amount of tungsten that I'm trading for. Denmark has capitulated. We've gotten them out of the war, so that's helpful. One less thing to worry about up there. We still got to get this invasion going so I can push through into Russia a little, a little quicker. But it looks like the Americans are doing pretty well for me right now. Let's take a look at the situation in the war. We're showing 10% in our favor right now. Russia's got a long way to go before they capitulate. Estonia is going to be out soon. Uh, Russians still have somewhere between 110 and 163 divisions. Hopefully we can drive that number down by isolating and destroying some of them. And then the other war that we have going on is, is the main war that was going from the start, which really now just contains Kosovo, Eritrea, and Cyprus, countries I'm not really in a big hurry to go after. Obviously, it's taking forever to push through up here, and that's just really an issue of not having the organizational skill to get it done faster. Okay, so it's February of 2016. Here's the good news. The good news is I've finally made my landing over here, which is what I probably should have done to begin with. Uh, we're going to go in and start pushing through into Russia. The bad news is my troops got so disorganized up here that I had to try and pull them out because they got surrounded as soon as I pulled them out, they got attacked by six divisions and just wiped out completely. So I lost about two-thirds of my divisions up here in Scandinavia. Just a devastating loss. Uh, something like 40 divisions just gone. Uh, so the ones that have survived, I'm pulling back and I'm going to try to get them back down into Germany. Once I do that, I can get them refit reorganized and try to push out and and start advancing into Russia so terrible terrible things happen when you go to war with Russia in the winter and you don't have good enough supplies to kind of support that attack so lesson learned for me unfortunately the hard way and we're gonna very slowly break out from this with, hopefully with the help of my allies We do have outdated equipment in production that we're going to have to fix here. Uh, looks like it's my unmanned aerial vehicles, which I'm not really even producing right now. So really, I've, I've researched pretty much everything you could possibly want at this point in the game. So let's take a look at the situation now. 
Russia still got 96 to 143 divisions. Obviously, I took a big hit, and I'm down to 207 now. But we'll get that back up pretty quickly. And once I can support this attack, we should be in good shape. March 2016, things are going quite nicely at this point. We've got some units isolated up here. And we're going to very quickly destroy them. And then we'll be able to turn our forces east. Russia is getting low on divisions at this point. They are down to somewhere between 78 and 144. Uh, I'm just going to watch that lower number just for the sake of kind of keeping track of how many he loses. But we're back to focusing on upgrading some more things in the Navy. Just because I've pretty much upgraded everything else. There's some more things I can do for my ground units. But just about ready to wipe these guys out. We're pushing east. We're going to take St. Petersburg, make our way toward Moscow sometime in 2016. And hopefully that will be enough to effectively take the Russians out of the war. Uh, China continues to do well in the east and keeps enough of his focus in that direction that I don't have to face too much over here on this side. Okay, it's still at 78. Uh, enemy fielded manpower is down to just 1 million as opposed to the 7 million that I've got. And there's another nuke. I'm actually going to drop one right here just to weaken his forces that are opposing me and you'll see that number rise where we're currently losing there we go perfect bunch of units right here will do the same We've got plenty of nuclear weapons it just kind of softens him up and makes it a little easier to march through a little quicker once we hit this target we'll push back and make a new one and I'm finally, uh, these troops that were the survivors of the debacle in the north are just about ready to start moving back into Germany. I'll let them get refit and then I'll push them into the action as well. Estonia has capitulated, so that's one less enemy to deal with. We continue to press east. Man, there's a lot of divisions here right now. Oh, there's a nuke on St. Petersburg. Not sure who did that. Let's see if we can finish these guys off. Oh, I don't have air, air superiority up here to be able to nuke them. We'll just let the conventional forces deal with them. He's actually in, improved his number of divisions. He's up to 98 now. Uh, See, so he must have just got a bunch of new ones into the field. So that's going to slow us down a little bit. But I'm going to be able to do the same here shortly. I'm going to rush a bunch of new units into the field, even though they're not quite complete yet. We'll reinforce them later. I can almost form an entire new army with the folks that I just brought into the field. All right, it's about to be May of 2016, and my armies are knocking on the door of St. Petersburg. It won't be very long before we can take Moscow itself. We'll see where that puts us as far as uh, the advance toward capitulation for the Russians. Obviously, there are a lot of big cities out there. Volgograd being one of them. That's formerly Stalingrad. That's a big, uh, big target, as well as Rostov. But first up is St. Petersburg, and it's about to fall very soon. Let's just take a look. I've got several armies out here now starting to break out toward Moscow. Take a look at the situation. Russia's back down to 74 divisions, so we've taken out another 20 divisions in the last couple of weeks. He's up to 1.58 million casualties, most of whom were caused by me. I've inflicted 700,000 of those casualties. Uh, I've lost 500,000 myself. Uh, a lot of those were as the result of the disaster up in the north when I lost 40 plus divisions. Field and manpower of the enemy is down to just 840 to 44,000 now. Uh, he's not, he may still be at 92%, or that, I guess that's war partic participation. He may only be 16% toward capitulation, but the state of his army says that that is going to move rapidly in my favor. Have we taken St. Petersburg? No, we're about to. 
Let's wait and see. That's about to happen here in a minute. There it is. St. Petersburg is ours. Let's see how that changes things. It pushes him a little further. Not much. That was only 6%. So he's up to 22% now toward capitulation. But we've got several more victory points to be had very soon. Well, we're almost at the end of May. And as I suspected, the breakout is happening really quickly now. Um, I've got all, all my divisions up to the front. They're pushing along in all phases, all areas. We're going to take Moscow here in just a matter of days. And Russia is now down to just 62 to 112 divisions. Uh, enemy manpower under 800,000 or right about there. It kind of bounces around from one to the other. But uh, we've got him outnumbered almost 10 to 1 now. And there's just really nothing he can do to stop me. We'll take Moscow soon. We'll see what's happening out in the east. China's still taking their good old sweet time over here but they're keeping him occupied which is really all i can ask for they're keeping russia kind of confined to a two-front war that they can't really afford to wage so we'll watch we'll take moscow and which just got nuked and then i think we'll wrap up this episode it's probably a little shorter than some of the others but um a lot happening so I think that'll be a good stopping point once we take moscow we will have taken most of his major cities and then we're going to turn our attention south to this area down here and we'll take some of these victory points and hopefully once we take moscow and then once we turn on volgograd rostov take some of these other victory points that should be enough to finish him off i would think let's see what happens once we take moscow because right now he's at 36 percent toward capitulation oh there's another nuke on Moscow again. I'm much more concerned about nuking his forces than I am about nuking his cities. Okay, he's down to just somewhere between 63 and 90 divisions now. And his capital is about to be ours. I would guess it'll probably move to Volgograd next. Ah, oh, the mighty Cyprus has capitulated. I love when you get past that tipping point and it just becomes a route and you just start rushing through the territory at that point. We're into June now. His number of divisions continues to go down. He's... Still right around 800,000 fielded manpower. Almost there. It's a nice thing about having a ton of panzers is that I can move fast once I break through his line of defense. Here it is. All right, Moscow is ours. Let's take a look at the number now. Now he's about halfway there. He's 49% toward capitulation. It won't be long. Next episode, surely, we will finish off the Russians. And I think that'll pretty well do it for this uh, series. Because I don't know what else really there is to accomplish, except just to kind of mop up. I could go and take every single country on earth, but I will have taken out the United States and Russia. China is an ally. Uh, there's really nobody left. So uh, next episode, unless there's something specific that you all want to see with this game, I think once I take out Russia, that'll be pretty much it. And we'll just kind of look at what the world looks like at that point. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to stop right there. Uh, so, as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions. Use the comment section below for any and all of those things. Check out some of my other videos, including a first look I just did of uh, Thrones of Britannia, which is a Total War saga. Also, be watching for uh, another channel update. I know I just did one yesterday, but I've got some things uh, to throw out there for you, including an update about uh, the upcoming live stream uh, uh, for Ultimate General Civil War, which we're actually going to be moving. 
Uh, but I also want to get some feedback. We're going to do a multiplayer with me and some of you on Hearts of Iron 4. And I, I will record that series, but I won't upload any of it until the game is complete because I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Um, so be watching for that. And if you want to participate in that multiplayer Hearts of Iron 4 experience, you can let me know when I upload that channel update about that. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up if you would, and we'll see you again soon.